Every firm is using CAD software now, of some form or another. So making a change isn't as scary, but making a change today is a monumental business decision. It's a big fear. It is a massive fear. There's more opportunity today in technology integration with architecture than it's ever been in the past. So how do I compete? You'd be a fool not to see the future. I mean, you can see the future from here. You see exactly where all this is going. We're architects. We're skeptical of everything. The act of creating architecture is insanely time consuming. It's just thousands and thousands of man hours. You become profitable by trying to deliver the same quality or the best quality product that you can, but do it in fewer hours. It's all about efficiency. In the economic world today, things have gotten more complex. The buildings are more expensive today. Labor is more expensive. And they want to be sure that you're being very efficient with the money. And fees are being driven down architecturally as well over the years. So there is pressure on everybody. To overcome sort of the embedded thinking of, of how it's always been. That's one of my least favorite things when people say, oh, it's always been that way. In the long run, the world favors those who go after something bigger. Designing in 3D, so at the end of the design process, I've got my 3D building that can become my construction documents. That's vital. That's really what it's all about. That's a major advantage. And that is powerful. I mean, if you run an architecture firm and you get a whole room full of drafts people doing their work all day, the thought that the computer could be doing a lot of that work pretty much automatically <laughs> is a powerful idea. And, and if the only reason why you're not doing it is because, well, we already paid a lot of money for the other software, that's the wrong reason. They listen to the company that makes the software that they feel the majority of the profession uses. They don't actually embark on any kind of analysis of, is there something else that's better? A, or B, is that information even accurate? Anybody who's asking the question, is virtual design and BIM slowing us down, doesn't really understand the whole process yet. You're not creating a pretty model. I think a lot of people on the outside see it that way. It's like, ah, oh, it's an extra effort. You know, you're just gonna show clients what it looks like. Oh no, what you're doing is you're, you're building the building in the computer before you build it in real life. That creates a better product for the client all the way around. Some firms, because of the fees are really being driven down lately, spend less time on the drawings. And they do have more stakes on them, and they try and resolve them in the field. It's not our style here. I think when we're in schematic design, we know the structural system we want. So we're sort of ahead of the game on the technology of the building being brought in. We think we're better designers because of it. I could not deliver the work product that we do now at the same level of profitability if I didn't have Archicad. Not only less profitable, but possibly even not profitable. There is no rule book for how an architecture firm has to be. I developed the model in a preliminary stage and working with clients, and it's, you know, it's, it's certainly not super detailed the first day, but it evolves over time. It's the same model that's just being tuned and tuned and tuned. There's a lot of hours in there, but it's a linear process. So many firms have models and various pieces of software. All they've done is digitize the inefficiency. We instead use one piece of software. I design with that one piece of software, I document with that one piece of software, and that piece of software travels to the job site with me, and that becomes how I clarify questions during construction. Does it speed the process up? We still spend the same amount of time to some degree. We really do. What we end up with is a better set of drawings because of the BIM technology in it. That is what's really, really increasing the level of accuracy, the level of understanding, and keeping us engaged and involved in the process. This house we're sitting in today, it's a complicated, intense house, this place. And I can tell you, there were no errors, which is amazing to say that. And I can't imagine going backwards and ever doing some of the complex buildings we're doing today in trying to achieve the same outcome. I'm currently working on two projects and the building architects are using Revit. And there were so many anecdotes that I don't think my firm could operate the way I do uh, if I had to use Revit. You know, I think it's huge, and I'll tell you that the best indication I have that it's really given us a great leg up over our competition is whenever I hire a client and they say, I can never hire another architect that doesn't do this for me. It is so rewarding to hear that. I saw after a while, we were able to compete as a small firm, maybe only six or seven people. We could compete against a firm that was up to 50 people, because we actually had tools they didn't have, or we had better tools than they had. The dollar volume of work we're producing is significant for a firm of five to six people. You would need at least a third more than we have if you weren't using our efficient process. Technology is my friend. It's allowed me as a very small firm of four people to compete with 20-person firms all day long, and we can knock them down. There's nothing magical about it. It's just that in the architectural business, if you don't have a project in every single phase along the line, 
the firm is not sustainable. Anything that increases our productivity, anything that does more automation of what we do, anything that makes it faster is going to always be the best thing they can do for us. You never have to think, oh my gosh, am I gonna, can I handle this project? Oh yeah, you can completely handle this project.